Welcome to the Randy Gravit Leadership Podcast, where we help you lead the hardest person you will ever lead, yourself. Here's your host, someone who believes leadership begins at home, Randy Gravit. It's hard to believe it's been four months since I was sitting at dinner with a group of friends and my buddy Mark Miller asked me this question, what would we have to do to make this next year our best year ever? And it was a great question for those group that night. I went to thinking, how can I make 2021 my best year ever? And over the last few weeks, we've launched our course. Uh, we've been off the podcast for about six weeks uh, while we were doing that. But we we launched this course, 21 Days to My Best Year Ever. Well, over the last few weeks, uh, the, the conversation as we've launched that has been fascinating with people who have been part of that course. They've been sending us stories and all kinds of things going on. But the conversation on TV and in the sports arena lately has been about this idea of greatness. So it's got me fascinated with uh, this this chase for greatness that I think has been going on in some ways. Maybe my whole life, I've been thinking about what would it mean to be to be great, and not in a. Not, I mean, I want to I want to talk about this a little bit today. Not in some crazy way, that, like uh, with the wrong motives. I think it's important to understand our motives when we think about chasing greatness. But man, we've heard a lot the last few weeks about the greatest of all time, Tom Brady who uh, just won Super Bowl number seven on Sunday and pretty pretty hard to get your head around. The guy's been playing, I think, 19 years now. He's been in the Super Bowl ten times and won seven. And there's, there's all this I heard last week all the time. If he wins this game, it's case closed. He's the greatest of all time. And, and, uh, and, and you know, depending on how you measure stuff uh, and, and what he's – I'm not really sure what his motives are or what he's trying to do, but – I think it, you'd have a hard time arguing that he's not trying to win Super Bowls. I think he's he's pretty motivated by winning Super Bowls. In fact, I heard a statistic that the Steelers, I think, and the Patriots franchises over the last, uh, what, I don't know how long they've been franchised. It's 60 years we've been playing these Super Bowls, 55, 60 years. They've won six each, and I think the Cowboys and Broncos have won five each in the history of their teams. And Tom Brady, in his 19 years, has won seven. So he's uh, he may be the greatest organization of all time, too, not just the greatest uh, uh, athlete of all time uh, in in football. But you could you could make this case that uh, you know he's he's being great, measured by trophies. But, you know, you also could ask at what cost. I mean, there's been the PED deal through the years, and we had our deflated footballs and Spygate and, you know, all kind of things when he was in New England. He has, you know, gone and, and uh, to a new culture and, and changed that. And he's, he's definitely has, has a bunch of trophies to show for it. So he'll have, to, he'll have to weigh out, you know, at what cost some of those things uh, when it's all said and done. But I think it's a great conversation. What does it mean to be great? Well, I, I would wonder what would uh, if Tom Brady was uh, was having a conversation with with uh, with Jesus. What would you know? What would that conversation be like? Because there were there were some guys who, if you go back in the Bible, there was a there was a mom. Uh, James and John were these two guys that hung out with Jesus all the time, and their mom shows up one day, and and she's like, uh, th- "This is kind of a wild story." I think it's in Matthew chapter twenty. You have to look this up, but. It's in the Bible, and uh, this mom is like, hey, what would it mean for, or what would we have to do to get my kids to be able to sit on your left and right when everybody gets to heaven someday? So that's a, you know, you talk about the ultimate uh, high-strung soccer mom maybe coming, you know, on the scene that day. But anyway, here she is showing up. What do they have to do to be great? And Jesus kind of flips the whole greatness thing on his head when he says uh, that that whoever wishes to be great is 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 the one who is the servant. It's it's the one who serves others, and I, I love that. I, I I think there's a there's a paradox in in his in his thinking, and I think sometimes we think that accolades and trophies and yeah, it'd be great to have seven Super Bowls and you know maybe uh, what Phil Jackson's probably got more than a ring for every finger with all his basketball championships and. Bill Russell and some of these guys through the years have won a bunch of championships. Coach Wooden won, you know, all those all those things. And Brady's got his rings. That's fantastic. But I think at the end of the day, um, how cool would it be if we if we were able to say that we lived our lives in such a way that we helped other people be great? We unleashed the greatness in others. And so, as you think about your life today, what is it that that makes you? Uh, 
makes you excited when you get up in the morning? Like, what is it? If you, if you, I'm, I'm hoping if you're listening to this podcast that you want to be great, that there's places in your life you want to maximize your influence, maximize your opportunity. But, but how would you define that? And what's your motive for that? I mean, what are you really, what are you really trying to do? I mean, if you, you know, you get to the end of the, of your life and, and you got a bunch of trophies or a bunch of money or a bunch of results or a bunch of businesses you're created. I mean, you guys are doing some amazing stuff. It's incredible what all you have accomplished. And, and those things are, are great. But I think one of the things that I, if I look at Tom Brady I, and, and really evaluate him as a, as a football player, I think one of the things he has done is he's made a lot of people around him great. It, I, it was, I was pretty fascinated to hear that he, he chose to go to the organization that had that they're the they're, they're the the losing list I don't think that's a word but they're the they're the they're the they have the lowest winning percentage of any organization pro professional organization hockey football baseball basketball and all the major sports no team has ever lost more per, a, a, a higher percentage of their games than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and here he is I'm going to leave New England where I've won all these Super Bowls and I'm going to go pick the worst team and go now it's pretty fascinating. I heard this just yesterday. We're just a couple of days removed from this game. And last year when he, be, you know, he was a free agent, he could go wherever he wanted to. I heard yesterday that there were only two teams that were interested in having Tom Brady come. And it was the, the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which means that there were 30 teams who said, we think our quarterback is better than having him in the building, you know, and, and not even that they would have to get rid of their quarterback. They could have just signed him. And if their guy could have beaten him out, that'd been great. But, you know, just to have him in that culture, you, it, it's pretty amazing what has happened in Tampa in one year, they went from a losing team again. And I don't think they'd even won a playoff game in, you know, maybe 17 or 18 years, they said, and, and here they are now uh, world champions because of having him. But one of the things Brady did is he made, everybody around him better in that organization. I even heard some of the post-game uh, stuff the other night, and um, some of the players on that team talked about how they were excited about being able to tell their kids someday that they played with Tom Brady. I, you'd think they would say, I'm excited about telling my kids that we won a Super Bowl or I was a world champion, but they're like, I played with Tom Brady. And so when you think about your leadership or you think about your life and you think about your family, you think about the people that you're with, will they look back on their time with you and, and think, I'm excited that I got to live my life under her roof or his roof or in their family or on their team at work. It's, it's, it's a pretty fascinating uh, conversation when you think about what it really means to chase greatness, to be to be so impactful in the lives of other people that they love being around you, their lives get better when they're with you, and they honestly um, are, are indebted to you. I mean, I think of all the people who have invested in my life. I'm, I'm indebted to them. I, I wouldn't be where I am were it not for them. And that was greatness in them being unleashed. It helped me be uh, a little closer to great. I, I'm, I'm certainly still chasing greatness, but uh, I, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm aware of of the people around me. I mean, that, that to me is what makes these quarterbacks that are that are so great, that's what makes them great is that they make everybody around them better. Coaches are like that too. You had a really great coach. They're able to bring out the best in in the people around them. And so, uh, I, you know, I just thought it was an interesting conversation as we as we think about it. So we, you know, we unleashed this course uh, earlier in the, in the, you know, the last few weeks we've done that, like 21 days to your best year ever. I'm, I'm actually thinking now like 21 days that, yeah, they give you a foundation, but they really want to put us on a road. We want, we want to help you get on a road to being great, to being the best you can be. And, and at the end of the day, that will only happen if you take time to define what does it mean to be great? You know, I mean, go, go back to, go back to what I was saying about Jesus a minute ago too. I, I love that Jesus defined it. He said, what does it profit a man, if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul, I mean, I, I think so many times we, 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 we try to gain all this stuff, results, reputation, you know, Super Bowl rings, whatever, and when it's all said and done, we forfeit really who we are. We don't really stay true to, to what we ought to be true to, to helping other people be great. And those motives around that. So, I want to, I want to just challenge you as we have this conversation. We're going to do a little series here. Uh, the next couple of weeks, we got, we're going we're gonna to talk about what it means to chase greatness. 
and uh, we got some stuff planned for you as we go forward. But we, we, you know, some of you have been wondering, like, where were you guys the last six weeks? And and uh, got had a lot of comments and stuff. It's been great. But we we honestly uh, were launching the course, taking a little uh, time to recalibrate after the first. We ran our, I don't know, what did we run this play? Probably 120 days, October, November, December, maybe only 90 days, whatever, that we, we tested some stuff in the fall to try to create a show. And so we're tweaking that a little bit. And you'll, you'll get more info on that as we go. But we haven't gone anywhere. We're, we're here. We're going to try to help you uh, chase greatness yourself. And, and what does it mean for you to do that in such a way that the people around you are benefiting. So I want to I want to do just a couple things here today. As as you're in in the middle of this week, we're we're uh, Wednesday here launching this uh, this week, and I want you to go back and, and do a couple things. First of all, what is it? How would you define greatness? Uh, you have to decide. Like, what does it mean to be great? What does it mean to you to be great? How would you measure that? How, what will what will it look like uh, if you do that? And then why do you want to be great? You know, why do you want to be great? And then I will say to some of you who are going, I don't really want to be that great. Why don't you want to be great? If you don't want to, if you're saying, I don't know if I want to be great, why not? Why would you not want to be your best? Why would you not want to maximize your life? Why would you not want to have all the influence and impact that you can? So I think in the in your work life and in your impact with your teams and the people that you're working with, the people that you're around every day, what would it mean to be great? What would it mean to help other people around you be great? And then I want you to you, you know we do this, and we've we've talked about this uh, through the fall. But what would it mean to be great at home? And and I, I'll I'll give you my question that I've used uh, for the last year or two to help me think about this: is how would I live my life in such a way that the people who know me the best actually are able to love me the most? Like how for you, what would it mean for you to live in such a way that the people who know you the best love you the most? They don't respect you the least because they think, eh. Dad does this, says this, and does that. Or mom, she's you know she's always talk, telling us to do that, but she really doesn't do it herself. I want to I want to live my life where there's consistency in my in my values, my attitudes, my actions. And you're going to blow it. I mean, I blow it all the time. I'm I'm going to uh, just tell you right up front. You're going to this is not going to be easy. But if you start with understanding, like my job, my not my job, really my. My opportunity, my calling, if you want to go that far with it, is to is to understand that I have a chance to unleash the greatness in my kids, in my coworkers, in my family members, my friends. Everywhere I go, I have an opportunity to add value to those people and and to help them be great. I, you know, I, I think that's I think that's a great way to live your life, a great thing for us to think about this week. And again, we're gonna hear from some people who are going to uh, to to def- how, tell us how they define greatness and some of the things that we can do to pursue it ourselves because I think it's I think it's important. Um, I'm guessing most of us listening are not. I mean, there, there might be some of you. I mean, I know some. We got some NFL folks that that are locked in, but I, I know most of us aren't trying to win a Super Bowl. That's not you know we're not going to get a Super Bowl ring this year or next year. That's that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to pile up trophies. But honestly, we are. There are people and there are opportunities and projects with your name on them, and they will become your trophies when it's all said and done. When this, when this year is over, there will be things that you're able to accomplish because you were locked in, you were focused, you understood really what it was you're trying to do. You were chasing greatness, I hope, and, or rather than just hoping things will get better or, or, or flying by the seat of your pants, as we've talked about before. It, I think it really is powerful for us to, to be focused, to lock in, to understand what it is we're really trying to do to be great. And, and, then, and then line our lives up to that. Every day, wake up and chase greatness. I, I, I use the word chase because I think it's a never-ending pursuit. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't want to get it upside down and think that the trophies and the money and that, all that's going to make you happy. That's really not where your happiness is going to come from. But if you start impacting the lives of others and you make everybody else around you great, in my book, you are great at that point. And so I want to challenge you this week to be thinking about this concept of chasing greatness. It really is available. There's greatness in you. It can be unleashed, but it's going to, it's going to take some intentional thought and focus to do that. If we could be helpful to you, I would uh, – really, there's lots of ways we might be able to help you. But one of the things I would say – if you've not downloaded the course, not done that, it's still half, and it's still half price, right? Stuart, we're, I got my guy over here. It's, we're half price still the next few weeks. 
yeah, go to go to randygravit.com. You can get that course. Uh, and I'm telling you, it is going to lay out 21 days to give you a foundation to create the clarity that you need to have the life that you want. It's going to help you build your capacity, have the energy and fuel you to, to do the things you're trying to do. And ultimately, you're going to be able to leave a legacy. And in my book, if you can have a legacy, a, a life that is is built around helping other people and, and focused on unleashing the greatness in them, you know, you, you will be the greatest of all time in your life. And that, that really, I think when it's all said and done, that's what we want. We want to make sure that we are living up to our potential. We're, we're using our lives to help others. And, and as we do, I think we can feel good about that. So you get to decide whether you think uh, Mr. Brady is the goat or not. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment on that. I'm, again, I think you have to decide how you want to define all that. But I'm telling you this, uh, no matter how many Super Bowls he wins, it's going to be important for us to make sure that we are bringing our best and winning where we are. If you'll do that, I, I'm, I'm confident the people around you, they're going to love being with you under your leadership, uh, around your life, and you're going you're gonna to benefit as well. So we'll see you next week. we got a great conversation with, with, a, with a coach that's going to be on here with us, and he's going to he's gonna share some stuff, and, and you're not going to want to miss that. If you, if you enjoyed today's episode and you want to be a, more of a part of this conversation, reach out to us. You can, you can email us or connect with us uh, through randygravit.com. And also, I would say help us uh, continue to grow the show. Uh, it's been great. We've had, we've had a bunch, oh, I don't know, what are we, 10,000 now people have downloaded and been a part of this, and that's been fantastic. Help, please help us continue to spread the word. You can find us everywhere you, you get your podcasts, and then I also would encourage you to leave us a review if you've not done so. So thanks for uh, everything this week. Have a great week. Let's go be great. Thanks for listening to the Randy Gravit Leadership Podcast. Please help us spread the word by sharing today's episode with your friends and coworkers. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel on Spotify or through iTunes. You'll find all the links on the media tab at randygravit.com. Now let's go apply what we've learned and lead ourselves well. Remember, leadership begins at home.